Hello and welcome to day two of the Cavallo Tights Sew Along. We're working on the Cavallo Tights by Green Style Creations and I'm using fabric from the Fabric Fairy. I'm Sarah and I blog at Sewing with Sarah and I'm really glad you're back here today to continue the construction of our Cavallo Tights. Yesterday we talked about fit, we talked about pattern options, we talked about supplies and today we're going to cover the two P's um, that I call patches and pockets. So we're gonna get started on both of those. Now, um, something I did forget to mention in yesterday's video is that one of the supplies that you're gonna wanna have on hand is clear elastic. So um, I like to use either quarter inch or three eighths inch clear elastic. Um, this is from the Fabric Fairy and I really like the Fabric Fairy's clear elastic because it's coated a bit so it doesn't stick to your sewing machine foot when you're sewing it. You can sew this clear elastic, it'll go in the top of your waistband um, on one of our last days of the sew along. Um, you can sew it in with a serger, you can sew it in with a sewing machine, and I do have a video um, that I'll be sharing with you for how to do that. But just make sure you have some clear elastic on hand. For today, one of the main supplies um, that we're going to need in addition to our pattern pieces, of course, um, is going to be basting spray. If you're going to be attaching the patches to your Cavallo tights, you're going to want to have that. Um, this just makes things easier. You can, of course, just pin, um, but especially with knit fabrics, they tend to stretch a bit when you sew on patches or applique. Um, so basting spray will help you keep things in place um, while you're sewing them. And we will be sewing the patches on with a sewing machine. You can use a cover stitch, um, but a sewing machine will be just fine. Um, so you can do that with a straight stitch. I would recommend doing like a three millimeter stitch length, or you can use a narrow double needle cover stitch. If you are going to be using your cover stitch, two needles is going to be what I recommend today, um, both for sewing on pocket binding and for sewing on the patches if you're using them. Um, you're going to also want, if you're sewing those patches, to have a marking tool, um, either a chalk marker or a friction pen, um, or you can use you know, something that works for you, but these are my two favorites. I find that the chalk marker doesn't always roll well on all fabrics, um, so depending on what you're using, um, you may want one or the other. But those are my favorites. The friction pen erases with heat, so that's why I just love it, because all it takes is a really light press with my iron and my marking is gone. Um, of course, you always want to test your marking tools on your fabric before you use them just to make sure that, you know, it doesn't somehow take the color out of your fabric or something crazy like that. Okay, um, so today I'm going to take you over to my cutting table. We're going to talk about the patches and then we're going to talk about the pockets. Keep in mind that you, on the pockets, you have those two options. You can do the slant pockets or the scoop pockets. And you want to make sure that you've altered, if you've added or subtracted any length from your pattern pieces at that upper length and shortened line, that you've done the same to your pockets and your pocket insert pieces, okay? Um, so you wanna make sure that you do that evenly so that all of the curves and pieces match up. Um, and then keep in mind that you have the option of either adding a binding to your pocket, which I will demonstrate, um, a band, which I will also um, instruct you about how to sew, or just simply, if you had cut on the higher line, folding it under and hemming it. Okay, so I'm gonna take you over to my cutting table and we'll get started. Okay, so I have brought you down here to my cutting table to show you how to attach the optional knee patches. Now you can do this from stretch suede or really any other material that um, you would like that you think will make a good writing patch. Um, I would recommend before you get ready to attach the patch with your basting spray, make sure you've got your patch pieces cut out and go ahead and mark on your leg piece where that patch is going to go by using your main pattern piece as a guide. Um, now, I'm not going to actually attach them to mine because I'm not making writing pants, but I am going to show you how. So you want to take your patch piece and you want to grab a marking tool of some sort. Now you should have a mark on your legs where the patch is going to go. Um, at this point, you could hold it up to your body and also just verify that that's going to end up where you want it to be. If you made length adjustments, um, that could affect the location of the patch. So now is a good time to just kind of hold things up and see. Um, but if you are ready to attach it, 
you're going to make a line about an inch in using one of your marking tools. And this will be a guide while you're sewing. So I've used a friction pen because it seems to work well. And what I do is I just take a ruler and I line the inch marking up with the edge of my knee patch. And I just kind of make a mark there. And then you can move your ruler around or you can just kind of eyeball where that's going to go. Keep in mind that these marks are all erasable. So, got some fabric here. Just kind of marking, just so it looks even. And I actually did it too low there, so that helped me kind of figure out where to put it. So, you're going to actually sew this on with two lines of stitching. You're gonna have one line of stitching pretty close to the outside edge. You don't need to finish this edge in any way because it's a knit fabric, so it shouldn't fray. If for some reason you know, you're concerned, you could always do that, but it's gonna show because you're not gonna be folding any of the edges under. So you don't really need to worry about finishing it. Um, so your first line of stitching is gonna go right along the edge here, maybe a quarter inch in. And then your second line of stitching is going to go inside of that, following the lines that you just marked about an inch in. And this, you know, you could do, the pattern says one and a half inches, you could do that. Um, I think one inch looks pretty good, but again, it's kind of up to you. So at this point, you can either pin it or you can use your basting spray. Spray the back and then sew it down, or um, press it down so it stays in place and then you'll take it over to your machine and sew. Now, if you're going to use a standard sewing machine, you can do this with a straight stitch, just maybe a three millimeter length, slightly longer length than you would use normally. If you're using a cover stitch machine, um, you know, you would go ahead and, and use your cover stitch around the outside and then do a second line of stitching on either your cover stitch or your sewing machine inside. So those are the patches, and of course you're gonna wanna do this for both leg pieces. And I didn't mention this, but always make sure that your powder, your fabric is right side up and that you're sewing mirror images of the legs. Sometimes with some fabrics like this one, it's you know hard to tell which is the right side at a quick glance. So you wanna make sure that you're doing this symmetrically on both legs, okay? So those are the patches. So I'm gonna set that aside. And now I'm going to talk about the pockets. Now I've chosen the slant pocket option for this pair of leggings. And so take both, you wanna, regardless of whether you're using the slant or the scoop, now the slant pocket option has a line of stitching that's marked um, so that your pockets don't go too far, or your items don't go too far down when you're riding. But it's also really helpful just if you're running or whatnot to have that line of stitching marked. So again, you know, take your marking device, Make sure that it's marked the same place in both of them. Um, you could also, you know, I found that I actually kind of want to move this line of stitching up a bit. So this is about where the pattern has you mark it. I'm going to move it up a little bit because I don't like it when things really kind of fall down. So I'm going to make my line. Okay, so I've got that marked. But the first thing I'm going to do, I, you're going to have an option for hemming. So if you're going to hem, you're just going to fold under the edge. And I've laid them both right side up to make sure that I'm doing mirrored pair. But if you're hemming, you know, you're just going to fold under the edge and then top stitch. Again, if you're using a sewing machine, a zigzag stitch here would work, a stretch stitch, um, you know, even that lightning bowl stitch. Sometimes um, you could use something um, like some knit stay tape if your machine tends to cause tunneling when you're sewing um, knit hems or stretch th stretches things out, that would be something that you could use there. But the binding really per helps prevent that. So if you're using the binding, you wanna take your binding pieces and the greatest stretch in this binding piece is going this way. So that's going to match up and you're gonna sew that. And you really don't need to provide much tension at all. You're not stretching it a ton as you apply it, just maybe the tiniest bit. And you're gonna sew that on. 
Again, you can use a serger, which is what I'm going to do, or you can use a sewing machine with a zigzag stitch to stitch along here at the 3 8 of an inch, okay? So you're gonna sew that on, and then I'll come back to the table and I'll show you what to do next. So I've gone ahead and stitched my binding on right sides together with the top of my pocket. Now I'm going to flip my binding up my seam allowance is also pressed up, just finger pressed. And then I'm gonna fold my binding under. And this is where you can press that if you'd like or just kind of finger press it. You can go over the top with a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch or your cover stitch machine. I've gone ahead and done that and I like to start, you can see I like to start on um, a little scrap of fabric that's folded over so I can get right up close to my binding edge with my cover stitch machine. I know the stitching is really probably challenging to see, but I stitched right along that edge and just kind of folded as I went. And then if I flip it over, there's obviously quite a bit of extra fabric on the back here. That's okay. I'm gonna cut off my spare piece of fabric there and then I can trim the binding. Now, oh, these scissors aren't working because I think my daughter has used them for paper, but this is where you would go ahead and trim us off. Now, if you are, you know, if, if a binding just seems like too much for you at this point, I encourage you to try it because I think this method is really accessible, but you could treat this like a band instead. Um, if you were doing that, instead of serging it or sewing it right sides together on a single layer, you would do this with a double layer so you would have two layers there, just like a neck band, and then flip it up and you could top stitch below. So that's another option that would work just fine. Hemming also works. It's just up to you, personal preference, but I encourage you to try the binding if you haven't before. Um, and I have a really detailed photo and video tutorial separately that I'll link that shows exactly right up next to the cover stitch machine what I'm doing. Um, but that can definitely be done with either a sewing machine or a cover stitch. So now, you have your pocket piece and now you're ready to take your insert and pin your pocket piece to your insert. Again, you wanna make sure that you're choosing the fabric that's right side up. So I'm just kind of verifying that here. So mine go like this. And then you're going to take your pocket piece and place it on top. And it should line up at the bottom and then go up towards the top. And that scoop is going to be the opening for your pocket. So what you want to do at this point is just take your sewing machine and baste along the edges. So down all the way down around, baste those two layers together. And then this is where you will stitch your horizontal line of stitching right here across with a cover stitch with a stretch stitch on your sewing machine to make a bottom to that pocket now if you don't do that nothing terrible is going to happen your pocket is just going to be quite a bit deeper um, and so it just depends on you know what you're using these for and whether you mind your items kind of going these things have an amazing amount of pocket i mean i could fit like look all my sewing tools could fit in here it's kind of cool and I have used these I mean these days I'm carrying sanitizer and wipes and all kinds of things wherever we go so the pockets have definitely come in handy but if you want your pockets to have a bottom make sure you stitch there so you're going to baste and stitch and then you're going to do the same thing for the other piece and your pockets will be ready to go ready to be attached tomorrow so I've just finished sewing my horizontal seam here um, I did use a wide two needle stitch on my cover stitch and you can use if you have if you're using a standard sewing machine a twin needle would also work here and would work at the top of your binding so that's another option if you have the ability to get a twin needle um, but you should have that stitch and then you should be basted all along the edges and if you're new to sewing you may not know um, a basting stitch is just a long straight stitch. So this is just a five millimeter length straight stitch that's really just designed to hold things in place as close to the edge as I can make it. 
and it's not perfectly even and that's okay because it's just gonna get sewn off, uh, surged off or just, you know, kind of sewn over when you attach the pocket pieces. So now our day two work is done. You should have two um, matching pairs of pockets and inserts assembled. And if you're adding the writing patches, you should have both of those on your legging pieces as well. So let me know if you have any questions today. Tomorrow we're going to tackle actually assembling those pockets. So we're going to be taking the pocket piece and we're gonna be sewing it along the back and I'll be showing you how to do that type of curved seam. So that's all of our work for today. Let me know how it's going. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, make sure to check out my other videos on YouTube, my other tutorials if you're enjoying this one. Um, you can find me on YouTube at Sewing with Sarah and um, you can always ask questions on my blog, sewingwithsarah.com. All right, I'll see you back here tomorrow.